we will be reviewing A Course in Linear Algebra by Damiano and Little. This is a Dover edition that I picked up secondhand, but even if you want to buy it brand new, Dover editions are usually quite inexpensive on Amazon. At the back, it says suitable for advanced undergraduates and graduate students. This text offers a complete introduction to the basic concepts of linear algebra. I felt that was a bit misleading. I think that this text is suitable for even early undergraduates. So people in second year who have taken a first course in calculus, they can understand what's in this book. So taking a look inside, it begins with vector spaces, def definition of vector spaces, linear combinations, linear dependence and independence, and bases and dimension. It goes into linear transformations, composition and inverse of linear transformations. It even deals with change of basis, so it tells you how to get the change of basis matrix and so on. There is a chapter on the determinant and the interpretation of the determinant as an area and how to find the determinant of an n by n matrix and some other properties of the determinant. Chapter 4 deals with eigenvectors, eigenvalues and diagonalization. There's also a section in here on geometry in Rn where they deal with how vectors behave like vector addition, what's the length of a vector and so on. There's a chapter on the geometry of the complex numbers as a vector space and chapter 6 which is the culmination of this book deals with how to find the Jordan canonical form and it actually shows you not just proofs regarding the Jordan canonical form but how to compute it. So this book is designed as a second course in linear algebra. I've noticed that it's been used for Math 224 at the University of Toronto. The book also has a chapter on differential equations. We know that the set of solutions of a differential equation forms a vector space and stuff like the eigenvalue problem that is covered in this book. So taking a look inside, we can see that they take a very geometric approach to vector spaces. So there's quite a few drawings to get you started. So it's good to have that visual example in R squared to get a sense of what these definitions mean. And there's there are lots of examples in this book. And the exercises in this book, some are trivial. For example, it says, let x equals 1, 3, 2, compute 3x. But they just want to set you up to understand some concrete examples of the general definitions. They do have some more challenging exercises as you go down. So for example, they're asking in question four, to complete a proof that was given earlier, as well as like question 10, let this be a closed interval and let f be the set of all functions, real valued functions on that interval, show that the set of real valued functions on that interval is a vector space if we find the sum and scalar multiplication. So this book has a good range of exercises, I think. And what I notice is that in this book, the questions at the end of each section, they never seem to go beyond about 12 to 16 questions. So every time you finish a section, you can finish the entire set of questions at the end of the section and get a good range of experience, but not be overwhelmed. Looking at page 184, geometry in Rn, apologies for the marks, I didn't get to erase all of them as yet. Um, as I was saying before, they do take a fairly elementary approach. So they define what is the angle between two vectors and they give an actual example of it. So even though the book aims towards a course in abstract vector spaces, it still takes an elementary approach. Taking a look at page 190, they talk about the Gram-Schmidt process and not only do they talk about the concept itself, but they have a fully worked example in R5 of how to get a set of orthonormal vectors. That's very good as a pedagogical tool. And I like that they have a treatment of the eigenvalue problem using the problem of a vibrating string. So this is a very welcome addition to this book, this additional chapter on differential equations overall. Most courses would cover at least chapters one through six, not necessarily chapter seven. I've seen some universities cover chapter seven because they had a course like a hybrid linear algebra and differential equations, but you don't have to do that. But it's good to know that this book has that. And the last thing I would point out is the availability 
availability of solutions in this book solutions written at the back they don't have solutions for every single exercise but for many of the exercises they do have solutions so that's been very helpful for me when I used this book and I was going through some of the exercises so overall this book is a nice addition to the available linear algebra texts it's good for a course in abstract vector spaces a second exposure to linear algebra it doesn't go as far as Axler's linear algebra done right but it is an excellent midway between a more elementary text and Axler or even an advanced text like Friedberg, Intel and Spence.